in. Welcome back to the G Spot. I'm Big G, and this is going to be mailbag number eight. Firstly, today I want to thank everybody that has watched my Timu video. As a brand new, what would you call it, video creator, I came into this with moderate hope and zero expectations, to be honest. I hope to get an occasional view as people stumbled across my videos. And if all my kids did pity subscriptions for Dad, I might get five subscribers. And to be honest, most of my videos haven't even done that well. But while trying to sort out an issue on Timu involving their poor packaging, I realised that there must be a lot of people like me wanting to do things on Timo that were hidden away, deliberately made difficult. Um, I mean, let's face it, that's the mon modern trend. Avoid speaking to a customer at all costs. And then when I discovered that every YouTube video and every report that came up on a Google search about contacting sellers on Timo were 100% bullshit. They were just totally bullshit. So I created a video about Timo and in three days it's had 212 views, which is amazing for my stuff. I now have 31 subscribers, none of whom are my kids. So if you'd like to see more factual articles about online, online selling platforms, please let me know in the comments. And by the way, I read all comments and I respond to all comments, even if it's only a little um, yeah, thumbs up. So, let's get started. While well, making Mailbox number 8 last week, I kept running into technical issues with everything glitching and in the end even losing my internet access for 10 hours. Honestly, the resulting footage was so bad, even a rank amateur like me is too ashamed to upload it. So that's where we begin today. With well, a look at things I opened that day and no longer have decent footage for, then we'll open up mail from the last few days. So, this is the John Wayne sign, currently out of stock. Uh, life is hard, it's harder if you're stupid, John Wayne. I just liked it. It's going up in my uh, little study office here. Next we have this on-air sign. Now I've got to be honest, I've seen uh, YouTubers with these signs in their studios, for want of a better word, and thought they had pretty much <laughs> How do I put this nicely? Thought they had a hold of themselves. Um, the whole purpose of an on air sign is to warn people that you're on air, not to make a noise. So, anyway, as it happens, I've got four kids, two grandkids, and only one of my uh, kids lives with me normally. That's my youngest boy who's just going on 18. But recently, my oldest boy, who's going on 26, has also moved in. And what I've found is it's very easy for them to forget that I'm about to record. Um, so I thought, oh, stuff it. I'm going to buy one of these. And it will, when I'm recording, like now, it will sit outside my closed office and people will know just to be a little bit careful um, it's USB powered so yeah that's pretty convenient um, 
Now, I'm going to turn this on, let you have a look at it. Watch your eyes, it is very bright and it will probably swamp out the camera. Okay, so what I think you're seeing on the camera is pretty much a white sign, white lettering, white border with um, a red haze in the background. Sorry, just, oh, move that light out of the way. Now, sitting here in real life looking at it, I cannot even see the barest hint of white. It is all a vividly bright and strong red colour, which suits my purposes just fine. Uh, I don't know enough about photography and so forth to know why it's showing up white for you, but rest assured it is not. It is very, very red. Okay, this is the listing. Um, it gives a far better idea of what the sign really looks like. However, the picture just can't convey how bright and how brightly red this thing is. Now, I paid uh, $30 for... Actually, no, I didn't pay that. I paid just under $30. It has gone up a touch. Um, and I'm very happy with it i really am i haven't done a current draw test yet i will do that and i will add that in the comments of the video later on Okay, this is a small Punisher earring. Um, I have decided to put an earring back in my ear before it closes up. I haven't had one in there for a couple of years. No particular reason, just sort of got out the habit. the habit I will show you this the listing for this so you can see it better also just because they were ridiculously cheap I bought a couple of these cat's eye ear studs as well I might just yeah wear them from time to time just to look like a freak burger Freak burger. What else have we got here? Oh, since he's sitting here in anyway, I'll introduce you to Harry Bog. When I've got keys that I don't carry every day, but I don't want to lose. I like to put something bulky on them. So this is Harry Bog, skeleton on the shitter. I've got two of these on two different sets of keys.
Oh. I bought a hundred of these. I require a disabled car park. And I am so sick to death of not being able to get into them because of idiots. And so I bought hundreds of those. I'll show you the listing. Let's get it up here where you can see it. So it says, hey, idiot, you absolutely suck at parking. Flip over to see the reason. And then on the back, and you won't be able to see this until I bring the listing up. You park like an idiot for the following reasons. Then it has a number of tick boxes. Parking over the line. Blocking the sidewalk slash driveway. What on earth is a sidewalk? Oh, I think that might be what Americans call footpaths. Uh, taking more than one spot. Handicapped spot with no permit. Inventing a car parking space. Park too close to another car. Parking on the curb or grass. Don't really see how that hurts anyone. Uh, parked in a reserved space. Parked in a no parking zone. Blocking a bus zone. Double parking. Other. Now, I recently went to a um, regional shopping centre. And in that one trip, I'll tell you what I experienced. The first one I've got to mention is the other. Um, yeah, typical car park. You've got rows and rows of car parks and you've got little access roads to get to them. Well, I don't remember why I think it was a woman, but I'm pretty sure it was. Must have got totally confused and just parked on the car park roadway at a stop sign. Just blocked the whole car park. And then when I eventually got into the car park there was a disabled park but I couldn't use it because the idiot next to me had parked partly into my disabled car park which prevented me opening the door um, so and again he took more than one spot he was partly at least in a handicapped spot with no permit parked too close to another car And other. So, yeah, you know. Mm. For idiots. What else? Okay. These are self adhesive clips for, to help you hold um, LED strips in place. Now, all LED strips that I've ever seen have notoriously bad. Um, I don't want to open these, but I'll show you the listing anyway. Most LED strips, the self-adhesive backing on them is fairly useless, so I'm hoping to bolster it with these. these. I ordered two lots of cross horns, servo motor horns, and the description said that these were designed to fit 
inside the pan and tilt mechanism for say a robotic car now these are about 10 times the size required for that so they're a bit of a dud but I'll find something for them just move those out of the way these are um, basically steel wire key rings. Um, so, for example, my car keys fell apart the other day, and luckily that it happened while they were in the car. I don't have an ignition switch, so I was just sitting in my console and fell apart and I thought no bugger that so I am going to replace most of my key rings with these um, I can think of actually a dozen other uses for these Okay, I ordered from eBay 24 AAA rechargeable batteries, supposedly of 1000 milliamp hour. I am just putting together a test rig now, and then I will do a uh, probably a short video in a few weeks on exactly how these performed in real life no that's not for today um, I will be doing a video very soon on the test equipment I use um, and there's nothing fancy but you might find that interesting now this is advertised as a magnetic phone holder for your car there's no metal on it anywhere so it's definitely not magnetic but I didn't really think it would be and I don't require magnetic this will supposedly clip up whoops that way clip up under your dash and hold your phone so you can read maps and stuff Now, I use smoke bombs a bit uh, for photography, but also other things. Uh, I used to have a bit of a uh, event hire business and used to use them occasionally for that. Anyway, I usually get my smoke bombs from eBay or AliExpress because it's easy, there's no fuss, and they are incredibly hard to get in Australia. So, here's a pack of them. I think these will be white. I'm pretty sure this, well, at least should be a pack of orange, but you can't really tell from the colour of the cake usually. No, these are going to be blue or green. I don't know if you can see that. And I will be letting off a few of this type of thing um, in another video in the future. Also showing you how um, electrical detonators work and confetti cannons, smoke machines, a few other things. So.
few other things. So here I have individual smoke bombs, green, red and purple. And I moved into this house where I'm living oh, nine months ago. And the house itself is pretty organised, but I've got shit from almost from floor to ceiling in the garage. And I've got to sort that out. Now, I do have lots of tools, but being hard to find, I bought this pack of basic drill bits. I think there's, I think there's five sizes with ten of each from memory. I'll show you the listing. Just to keep my desk in here for when I'm putting little projects together. Um... Um, what else do I have to show you today? Oh, three lots of solar powered lights there. Um, I think all three of these are multicolored or meant to be. They're not actually marked, so that's not very helpful. Um, now I've had two sets of these in warm white, or it might have been cool white, I can't quite remember. I had one on a bush out the front garden and one along a little low side fence out where, where our entertaining area is, and they have been great. But I felt the bush out the front needed a few more. So what I did, I removed the ones from the backside fence, put them on the bush, and then I've ordered these as replacements for the fence. And they will go, it's a picket fence, so they'll go top and along the bottom rail. And I've got a spare there, which may run along somewhere else out there. Okay, I think that it that is it for last week's mailbag.